Hey, 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 what the heck? Sorry, guys. Yes, I arrived in time. Wow, what do you mean by that? Sponello, I do understand that it is half past five, but then I have a two hour lesson I have to give you guys about GIS. So please take your seat, guys. Don't worry about going home because of your own metric. You will be staying home or wherever next year. I do not care. But then this year, you have to sleep in this class. Yes, guys. So what is a GIS? In a simple definition or an abbreviation, let's start there. We say it is a geographical information system. Simple abbreviation. But because of we all know that a definition makes everything sounds better. Let's give it a definition. We say it is a computer system which is used to capture, manage, analyze, display and even distribute geographical information. Okay guys, let's write down so that you could better understand. What did I say? I said it is a computer system. Yes. used to capture, manage, store, analyze, display, and even distribute. You could add those kind of words. Yes. Information of geographical features. Yes, guys. Yes, guys, full stop. When we are speaking about geographical features, what instantly comes to your mind? You have to maybe thinking about mountain and stuff like that. No, guys, when we are speaking about geographical features in GIS, we are speaking whether natural or man-made. They can either be your natural, right? And they can either be your man-made, guys. Please, make sure that you are taking notes, guys. Because of when it comes to GIS, it's all about information. This is a nice information. It just connects one another. So, please, pay attention. And before you move or go anywhere, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Why? Because of I'm going to be spending two hours in this class. Whether they are howling or not, we are continuing. Yes, guys. So as I was saying, in order for the GIS to be possible, what actually creates this computer system? There has to be something that has to create this computer system. It is called the five components. There are five actually core components that are contributing into the creation of GIS, right? I said there are five components. Okay, guys, and when we name our five components, we start with the most important one. In order to capture, store, and manage data, what do we need? We need hardware component. We need a hardware object which we can create in order we can throw outside, maybe like your satellite. We can create so that it could able to capture information and we could also create what? computers so that it could also be able to capture or interpret the information that is being captured by satellite and then what else to distribute the printer right to distribute the information those are the hardware systems that are very much important in, in creating a gis those mouse and computer uh, um, and keyboards very important as well but then when we are speaking about the most important components in creating a GIS. The most important one, we're speaking about computers and satellite. When we are speaking about hardware components, yes guys, so we said number one, hardware components. Please guys, take notes. I'm not going to be saying this for the third time or the whatever, I do not care. So I'm going to start by saying hardware are your satellite, as we said, right? Your satellites and those computers and definitely that printer, right? That printer, that mouse, that keyboard and stuff like that. Those are the hardware components that are used to capture this information. All right, when this information has been captured, how can we actually be able to easily understand this information? We have to create programs, right? We have to create 
apps that can be able to help us in actually understanding the information that has been captured by this hardware components. We need what we call now the software components, right? And as I've said about the software components, when we are speaking about software components, now we are now speaking about your apps, the programs that are inside that computer that are actually helping us to easily understand the information that has been captured, right? So your software, those apps, and definitely uh, those programs that you find, those website, right? Programs and stuff like that. Okay, guys. So that is your hardware. That is your software components, I mean. Okay, then obviously we have to have the most important one. We should have actually started with it, but then it doesn't matter who we start with. It's not a hierarchy here. It's not about who started first, but then it does matter who started first because of hardware. But then people are very much important, which is the third component. People. Yes, guys. People are the third component. They are contributing in the creation of GIS. You may ask yourself how. All right. If the satellite has been thrown outside or maybe the plane was used uh, in order to capture the information of that particular area, people are going to that particular area to actually verify. They go to that particular area and verify if there is a windmill. Right? Maybe they said there's a windmill, there's a river in this area. People, they can be able to physically go there and verify and say, yes, we saw it with our eyes. It is there, right? But then it doesn't mean that we have to go in each and every place and see it with our eyes, right? Now we have created, obviously, systems in which we'll be talking about within these components. So there are people. People are helping with distributing the information, capturing the information, and validating the information, right? Those are the most important things about people. Then we have this also most important, very, very much important, which is called data. Data, which is definitely information, guys. So here we said, obviously, these people are the distributors distribution of they are doing all the distribution the validation right they are doing all everything that is there right the validation they are doing everything that can be done in order to verify whatever has been captured by these hardware components and then the data the data when these hardware components are obviously maybe uh, what released right released to the atmosphere and we don't know if it's going to be coming back or it, it might be done anytime soon. So we must be able to capture as much information as we can as, as it is increasing, as it is moving up in altitude. Re capture as much as information as we want in order to do what? To create data such as maps, right? To create maps, that is data. To, to obviously capture satellite images, right? That satellite images... That is data, satellite images, guys, and also aerial images, which are taken by your planes and your helicopters. Yes, guys, that is data that are telling us about that particular area. What, 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 what do we find? Which geographical feature can be found in that particular area? Yes, guys. And then lastly, the one that is not usually asked, right? And we have to edit anyway, which is the method, right? The methods are just uh, the systems that have been designed that are much bigger than people, right? That can be able to analyze and predict and even verify better than people, right? These are the methods that are also there, right? So there are systems that are there. Yes, guys, these are the components that are actually creating a GIS. When you are looking at this chain, this food chain, you will now definitely understand what is GIS, guys. GIS is very, very much simple. Yes. Now let's continue to this very much important word, which is called spatial data. Yes. If you were part of those people that were crying about spatial data, spatial data, GIS, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Why? Because of you will not live here before understanding 
what you came here to understand. Yes. What is a spatial data? Yes. In a simple definition, you will say it is an information system which is used to identify the geographical features location. So this is a system that is used to actually tell us where is the reservoir, where is the dam, where is the house, where is anything that we see with our naked eye. This is the system that identify where is that actually particular thing. Where is that house? Is that system that identify the geographical features location? As I've said, geographical feature can either be natural or man-made, right? So this system, which is called the spatial data, it is the one that captures the location of where is that house, where is that road, but then how does it capture this information? It uses spatial objects. Guys, please listen to these terminologies. I said spatial data, I gave you the definition. Now I'm saying spatial objects. This is the one I can write. Spatial objects. Yes, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be writing everything. I, I won't be writing that definition. You already have wrote it or rewind back and definitely get that definition. Yes, so the spatial object. What is a spatial object? When we speak about spatial object, we are now speaking about the, the objects that are used in the map that are actually telling us that this is a house, that this is a reservoir, that this is a building, or this is a cultivated land and stuff like that, right? That those are spatial objects because of in a map, they won't be drawing houses, right? So they will be using spatial objects. Yes, and there are three types of spatial objects that are used in a map. Our first one has to be this one, which is a point. Yes, guys, it is called the point. It looks like this. A point can represent a lot of things. It can represent either a reservoir, a house, or just a small, a small thing. Maybe there's a windmill in that particular area. And also a point can also be represented in a rectangle or it can be in a square, right? That is a point which is representing a building and stuff like that, right? A small building, just a small just it has to be a small yeah, just, just for, for a small geographical feature which is like a house as small as such as a, as a house yes guys that is a point spatial object and it can also be like this guys it can also be a triangle representing our trick station height yes we know our trick station height it is also a point when it comes to spatial objects that are drawn on a map, right? So there's this point, and there's also this one, which is called the line, spatial object. This is the line. They usually use a line to identify the physical features which we see, such as the road, the rivers, right? In the map, they use a line to identify the roads, the rivers, the, the railways, the row of trees, just a different things that are in a linear, right? That are usually in a straight line. So they use a line to represent them. Whether it's a river, whether it's a, not even if it's not a straight line, just in general, that is a linear. We know what, what a linear scale, right? We remember when we're speaking about linear settlement. Yes, guys. Then also we move to what we call the last one, the polygon, right? So this is the polygon. This is the polygon spatial object. Yes, the polygons. It can be polygons. So it is like this. It's a much bigger structure. It is just uh, usually you, you could tell there are different shapes, right, to represent a polygon. Because of a polygon can be a lot of geographical features such as your rivers, not your rivers, in fact, your dams, right, your cultivated land, your bigger buildings, your golf course, right? It can represent much larger geographical features. They use polygon to represent much larger, right? Larger than the house, larger than the road, larger than, yes, guys, because of they can't be drawing a golf course on a map. So they have to use this kind of a shape to represent that particular area. Yes, guys, so a spatial data uses spatial object in order to identify the location 
of geographical features yes guys so these are your definitely special object yes guys so make sure that you like this video subscribe to my channel if you still want to see usem numzane continuing when it comes to vector data raster data the raster variant yes guys make sure that you click that like button okay but then before i leave you i have to at least add some other information okay now let's speak about what we call spatial resolution yes because of we are within the spatial data and spatial everything spatial resolution it's another term the spatial data spatial object and the spatial resolution the spatial resolution is speaking about the quality if you are seeing if there's a quality in this camera i'm using then that means this phone has higher spatial data right has higher spatial resolution i mean if you can see me clearly that means this phone has higher spatial resolution but then if i was a bit blurry right then you can say it is lower spatial resolution it speaks about the quality of my face right do you see me as i think i see myself in the mirror hopefully um, i'm not messed up because of now you are looking at this handsome face yes guys as i've said the spatial data spatial object and spatial resolution resolution speaks up of the quality right of the design yes we know resolution speaks about quality we are going to be moving to resolution and stuff like that later on because of i can see this lesson has already taken a lot guys i know it is already 7 pm and you want to go home so yes guys tell your friend to like this video subscribe please because of we have to push this channel to 100k what would that be okay